This is your 28storms.com and Hurricane Tracker app tropical weather update for Tuesday, October 4th. The tropics are somewhat quiet this afternoon. However, it definitely looks as though things are about to change, especially within the next week or so. And this is regarding the southeast United States as well. First off, Tropical Storm Philippe is still trying to maintain itself as a moderate tropical storm. However, Philippe is really not much of a concern. We see that there is a fairly strong trough out west, and this is going to allow the tropical system to make that turn out to sea. The rest of the Atlantic Basin is generally quiet. We see a lot of convection out here to the east of the Lesser Antilles, but the westerly wind shear is in excess of 30 to 40 knots, so we're not expecting any development over there anytime soon. In fact, the main development region, or the Cape Verde hurricane season, is more than likely shut down for 2011. But here in the Northwest Caribbean, we already see some disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity, and this extends well into the Southeast Bahamas, and that is where we do have a stalled out frontal boundary and has been alluded to over the last several days. This is more than likely going to set the stage for tropical development within the next week. We're also keeping a very close watch to the south of Mexico here in the Eastern Pacific. We do have a broad area of low pressure. However, nothing is getting its act together at this time, and it will more than likely take another week or so for anything to get its act together down there as well. The latest Sims wind shear analysis shows that much of the Gulf of Mexico is highly unfavorable for any development at this current time. We have wind shear in excess of 40 to 50 knots, and generally speaking, much of the Atlantic Basin is unfavorable today. However, if we look a little bit more toward the south, much of the eastern Pacific into Central America has favorable and light upper level winds. We see that there is an upper level ridge located directly over Central America and it really wouldn't take much for that upper level ridge to at least try to extend more toward the northeast into the northwest Caribbean or southeast Gulf of Mexico and that is where we still have very warm sea surface temperatures well in excess of 80 degrees Fahrenheit and as we alluded to earlier there's that stalled out frontal boundary just to the south of the Florida Keys extending into the Bahamas. In regards to the Madden Julian oscillation, we have talked about how much of the basin has been rather unfavorable for the better part of the last couple weeks. The brown colors here denote that there is a lot of sinking air, which is not favorable for tropical development. But as we forward this from September 30th into October 3rd, notice that we are beginning to see a little bit more upward motion spreading into the eastern Pacific and South America. And the model guidance is indicating that as the MGO begins to spread into phases 8 and possibly even 1 by mid-October, we are going to see more upward motion over the eastern Pacific and western portion of the Atlantic Basin, and that is only going to enhance the probability that we get a couple more tropical cyclones. Additionally, we are seeing increasing model support for the idea that at least a hybrid subtropical system will develop near Cuba or southern Florida within the next 5 to 8 days. This is the latest 12Z 850 millibar vorticity forecast from the Canadian CMC model. There's really not much on the chart at this current time, but as we advance this all the way through day six, notice over much of the southeast Gulf of Mexico and northwest Caribbean, we are beginning to see increasing vorticity, which is a good indication that we are in the process of developing a surface area of low pressure here, and it's more than likely going to be hybrid in nature and you get that overall idea just by even looking at the 850 millibar vorticity. The vort max is rather spread out across a rather large area and usually the subtropical systems are a lot larger and more broad with the overall winds and the strongest winds extending well away from the surface circulation. And also notice that much of the eastern Pacific is still forecast to be relatively active. The CMC, once again, is still more than likely overdoing the amount of activity with developing two to three cyclones. One to two is looking fairly likely, and as I've been talking about for at least the last three to four days, it is more than likely going to happen with one cyclone impacting the Mexican coast or coming very close. So interest there need to keep a very close watch on the monsoon trough to the south of the country. The extended version of the 12Z Canadian CMC model is not available. However, the overnight run is available through day 10. This was the six-day forecast. We have a developing 994 millibar surface low directly over southern Florida. As we go into day 7, it's beginning to spread into the southeast Gulf of Mexico. And it continues to just persist in the southeast Gulf of Mexico all the way through day 8. So that is the overall thinking from the CMC model at this time. Switching over to the 12Z forecast from the GFS model. First off, the GFS has had the tendency to show low pressure developing 
on the east coast of Florida, more so into the Bahamas. But the GFS does appear to be trending closer to the CMC solution this afternoon. If we advance the forecast all the way through day 7, notice that the 850 millibar vort max is beginning to cross the southern half of Florida, and it's beginning to spread into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And notice in the eastern Pacific that even if the tropical systems develop well out into the Pacific, the tendency based on the pattern is that they could eventually recur more toward the northeast in the extended range, and that could be something to watch here for interest along the coast. If we switch over to the GFS sea level pressure and precipitation forecast for day 7 and beyond, we see that by 168 hours, or by early Tuesday morning, it has a weak area of 1,008 millibar surface low pressure located well to the southwest of Tallahassee, Florida. But much like the latest version of the CMC, by day 8, look at the GFS. It has a developing 1,002 millibar surface low located just to the south of Destin, Florida. So this is a rather dramatic shift here with the GFS. It looks like a broad area of low pressure may begin to develop here between Florida and Cuba and then start working its way toward the northwest, possibly up the west coast of Florida. And last but certainly not least, this is the 12Z run of the ECMWF model. The European model has been the most consistent with developing a hybrid tropical system. And as we go into 24, 48, and 72 hours, we still don't see any sign of tropical activity. But notice the intensity of this very strong surface area of high pressure over much of the mid-Atlantic and east coast. And we have a developing pressure gradient. Notice how close and stacked together these isobars are over much of the Florida Peninsula. And as we go into day four, that's when we really begin to see our first sign of a developing surface low directly over Cuba. And by day five, much like the CMC and GFS now, we have a developing 1,004 millibar surface low located to the southwest of Sarasota, Florida. So all three of the main dynamical models are in agreement with that we will have a developing hybrid tropical storm. And if it does get a name and is classified by the National Hurricane Center, it will be called RENA. But as has been stated repeatedly already, it looks like it's going to be more so hybrid in nature. That means that we could still have a rather significant rain event. And of course, it's going to bring fairly gusty conditions, especially with that pressure gradient between the area of low pressure and the surface high. But the one good thing about hybrid systems is that usually places a limit on how strong these systems can get. However, this is an extended forecast, and we will still have to monitor just how tropical the system could become. So stay tuned, especially if you're a resident in Florida. But this could be an extended rainfall event as it begins to work its way more toward the north, and we will just see how the track forecast pans out. Just to finish off the run, however, this is the day six forecast, and it's continuing to deepen the surface load down to 1,002 millibars. And by day seven, it's beginning to move more toward the Florida panhandle, by day 9, it's actually inland over Georgia, and that is in response to this trough beginning to deepen over much of the Midwest and lower Mississippi Valley. And the last thing I would like to show regarding the ECMWF forecast is what it's showing in the extended range for the eastern Pacific. This is day 4. We have a tropical system well out at sea, but we have a second system developing a little bit closer to home. By day 5, both of these systems should now be classified if this run were to verify. And notice here, as we go into day seven, or excuse me, this is day six, that system is beginning to make a turn more toward the northeast in response to the pattern and a developing trough over the Baja Peninsula. So there is plenty of reason to keep an eye on the tropics if you live along coastal Mexico or in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and possibly up the east coast to some extent if that hybrid system were to track up the eastern seaboard. Again, that could be another prolonged heavy rainfall event down the road. This is the latest HPC five-day precipitation forecast. Now keep in mind, as we go into day five, that is just when the area of surface low pressure is forecast to develop. So the rainfall totals could be a lot higher as we go beyond day five. But as it stands already, the precipitation totals are on the rise compared to yesterday for much of central and southern Florida. HPC is forecasting a precip maximum in excess of three to four inches and expect these forecast rainfall totals for the extended five-day periods to increase as we go into the next couple of days.
So please stick with 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app throughout the remainder of the week into next weekend. For more updates on this developing area of low pressure coming out of the Northwest Caribbean or Southern Bahamas, it's still a little bit too early to dictate exactly where that surface low is going to form, but chances are it will be forming somewhere close to Southern Florida or the northern half of Cuba, and thereafter it is very likely to impact portions of the Southeast United States. So thanks again for viewing this afternoon, and don't forget to check out 28storms.com for another video update by tomorrow afternoon.